Hi, Kevin here. Nice to see you again. Well, today we're fixing a puff pastry vegetable tart. I made the same tart last week and can assure you it's beyond delicious. You can use any vegetables you like. The trick is to roast them first in order to relieve them of excess moisture. This way the crust will be crispy even on the bottom of the tart. Now for today's tart I'm using broccoli florets that I cut into oh roughly half inch pieces and one small red bell pepper that I cut into rough half inch pieces and one small red onion that I sliced into thin half moons. What you do is put the vegetables on a baking sheet and then drizzle them with a little olive oil. Give them a sprinkling of salt and some grinds of black pepper. And then toss them about so all of the vegetables are coated with the oil and salt and pepper. Now put the vegetables in a preheated 425 degree oven just until they soften them up and start to color just slightly. That will take, oh, 18 to 20 minutes. All right, here are the vegetables all roasted. And I'm going to let these cool while we fix the mascarpone mixture that's going to hold the vegetables in place. And to make the mascarpone mixture, what you do is first crack a large egg into a medium bowl. And then whisk it really well. Then add two tablespoons of grated Parmesan cheese. Actually, I really love Parmesan cheese, so I'm going to add, oh, two and a half tablespoons. Whisk that in. And since we didn't put any, we're not putting any actual garlic cloves on the tart, I'm going to add Oh, a teaspoon or so of garlic powder. There, we shall call that a teaspoon. Also going to add just a little pinch of salt. Not too much because the Parmesan is salty. And a few grinds of pepper. And three quarters of a cup of mascarpone. This is one of the best things on earth. If you've never tried it, you must. So that's three quarters of a cup. Yeah, this mixture is going to hold all of the vegetables in place on top of the tart. And you just whisk this Oh, this smells terrific, people. Now, I will put all of the ingredients and the directions over on my website. So be sure to visit kevinleejacobs.com. I'll put that link down in the description box below. Okay, and you whisk this mascarpone mixture just until it's fairly smooth, like this. Oh, I forgot to tell you. Do not turn off the oven. Keep it heated at 425 degrees Fahrenheit. And then grab some puff pastry. Okay, also line a baking sheet with either parchment paper or silpat. I'm going to put this on a marble board. I'm also going to fix the camera so you can see what I'm doing. All right, we need to roll the puff pastry into a 13 inch long by 10 inch wide rectangle. And let's see, we're already almost 10 inches in width. We're about at 13 inches already. So I'm just going to remove the creases 
from the dough. Okay, then move this aside. I'm going to grab the parchment lined baking sheet. And what I'm going to do is sprinkle the parchment with some shredded uh, Swiss cheese. You could use Gruyere or cheddar cheese if you like. And I'm going to sprinkle this in roughly a 10 inch by 13 inch rectangle. You could omit this cheese if you like. It just adds some extra flavor to the puff pastry. Then take the pastry sheet and put it right on top of the cheese. I'll put this on top of the board so we are centered. Now what we're going to do is cut, well, we're going to score the pastry about oh a half inch or three quarters of an inch from the edge. In other words, we're making a oh, three quarter inch border. When you score, you don't actually cut through the pastry. You simply make an outline. As the pastry bakes, the edge is going to puff up higher than the middle. It's going to look really attractive. Trust me. Okay, then put the mascarpone mixture on top. Yum. And then we're going to spread it out to the area inside of the scored border. I think I'll use my offset spatula for this job. All right, now grab the vegetables just strew them over the top in one layer. You don't want big clumps of vegetables. I should probably mention that this tart is not only wonderful for a casual lunch or dinner, but it is spectacular as an appetizer for a cocktail party or any party. Yeah, you can cut it into eight pieces. And again, it is not only crispy on the sides, it is crispy on the bottom because we roasted the vegetables first. Now I'm fussing a bit with the broccoli because I want to make sure that every slice includes broccoli. This is actually a healthy-ish tart. Okay, then, I'm going to add one scallion that I sliced up earlier. I did not roast the scallion because, well, scallions don't contain much moisture, so you don't have to cook them in advance. I'm also going to add some fresh thyme. When, when you're dealing with fresh thyme, start at the top of the stem and just pull down with your fingers and all the leaves will come off. Thyme is going to lend plenty of perfume to the tart. And there we go. I'm going to put this in the 425 degree Fahrenheit oven until the pastry puffs and browns. That's going to take about 25 minutes. So we'll be back. Here's our vegetable tart, fresh out of the oven. And as you can see, the sides puffed up attractively to make a frame around the vegetables. I'm going to let this cool on a wire rack for about five minutes and then I'm going to slide it 
Actually, maybe I'll do that now. You should definitely let your tart cool for at least five minutes and then slide it with the parchment paper onto a wire rack. This is just extra insurance against a soggy crust. Should be very crispy at the bottom. We'll be back and then we can have a taste. All right, it's time to slice this tart. I'm going to slice mine into eight portions and I'm going to use a pastry cutter or pizza wheel to cut it. So let's see, first I'll cut it in half. Oh, it's so crunchy. Cut each half in half. And then cut it right down the middle lengthwise. There. Eight slices. I'm going to separate them so you can see. And then it's time for a taste. I really don't like eating on camera, but I'm going to do it anyway. Look at this. So it holds its shape to your health. Mm. Can you hear the crunch? This is so good. When I made this tart last week, I ended up eating all eight portions of it over a four hour period. And I can tell you that even at the four hour mark, the tart crust was still super crispy and wonderful. So this is the kind of tart that you could make well, at least four hours ahead of time. And you can serve it at any temperature. Warm, at room temperature, it's probably even delicious cold from the refrigerator. So I hope you'll give this tart a try. And again, I will post the recipe over on my website and I will link that website in the description box below. So I hope you enjoyed today's episode. And if you did, Please click the like button, please subscribe, and please tap the bell icon so that you can receive notifications every time I upload a new video, which is at least once a week. So I will see you next time. Thanks so much for watching. I'm going to, I don't know if I'm going to finish off this tart. Okay, I probably will finish it off tonight. But I'm going to eat it out in the garden and wash it down with a glass of red wine. Okay, I'll see you soon. Bye for now. Imagine.